In section 11.2, we were conducting tests and intervals for the difference between two means for dependent samples. So in this section, we want to work with independent samples. So it will help us to remind ourselves of the difference between the two. Independent sampling is when the individuals selected for one sample do not dictate or have a relationship with the individuals in the second sample. Dependent sampling, which is often matched pair sampling, um, is when the individuals selected to be in one sample are used to determine the individuals in the second. For example, um, pre-test, post-test, or husbands and wives, or um, one twin and another twin, siblings, that kind of thing. Then they're dependent upon each other because they're related to each other. In general, um, a little rule of thumb is to think of independent samples as two independent groups that are measured one time. And dependent samples are one group measured twice, measured like before and after, or we measure one twin, then the other twin, that kind of thing. So we're going to describe whether the following sampling method is independent or dependent, and then determine whether the response variable is quantitative or qualitative. So a study wished to compare traditional acupuncture with usual, usual clinical care for a certain type of lower back pain. The 241 subjects suffering from persistent nonspecific lower back pain were randomly assigned to receive either traditional acupuncture or the usual clinical care. The results were measured after 12 months of treatments. Okay, well, let's see here. They have randomly assigned people put into two groups. So those people were put into either the traditional acupuncture or the usual clinical care. And then they measure them after 12 months. So this isn't one group put into acupuncture and the same group put into usual clinical care. That would be dependent. But because it's two separate groups that really only get measured at the 12 month level, that would make it independent. And then while we're on the subject, the pain level, mm, that's probably quantitative right? because they're probably using something like a pain scale. So we'll say that that's a quantitative variable, which is their pain level. And that would mean that we would be conducting, hypothetically speaking, a test for independent means for this data, these data, which is this section, 11.3. If they were dependent, then you'd use the information from 11.2. All right, suppose we want to test whether there's a difference in the body temperature of men and women. We collect a random sample of 65 men and, and 65 women and take their temperatures. Well, that would definitely be independent, um, primarily because they, they're randomly um, selected into either the male or female group, and the male and the females have really nothing to do with each other, right? So since they're not husbands and wives or brothers and sisters, that would be independent two groups, male and, male and female, measured once. And the variable, which is body temperature, is completely quantitative. Its units would be in degrees, right, degrees Fahrenheit if you're in the U.S. And that means that you'd be conducting an independent test for two means, just like um, the one above, which means you'd be in a section 11.3. Or hypothetically speaking, we could be conducting a confidence interval, constructing a confidence interval for independent means. Right, but it's two groups of people measured once. You've got your 65 women and 65 men, and they have nothing to do with each other. Right? That is completely independent. And again, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, that would not be. But since these are just random men and women, that's independent. All right, a recently published article reported that results of an experiment on reducing the percentage of men who develop prostate cancer. Um, oh, on reducing the, sorry on reducing the percentage of men who develop prostate cancer. The investigators randomly assigned 3,305 men to receive the drug um, dutasteride, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, and assigned 3,424 men to receive a placebo. Of those that received the drug, 659 developed prostate cancer, and of those that received the placebo, 858 developed prostate cancer. Okay, well, these two groups are separate from each other because they're randomly assigned into the drug group and the placebo group. So they have the drug group right there and the placebo group right over there. Okay, so then that means that they're independent for sure. But the response variable here is whether or not you develop prostate cancer. And that's not a quantitative thing, that's qualitative. You develop prostate cancer or you do not develop prostate cancer. And that means that it would not be covered in this section. Um, independent with uh, 
qualitative variable like that would actually be ne the next section, which is 11.1, .1, which I realize means we're going a little bit backwards, but I prefer covering 11.2 first and then working my way backwards to 11.1 .1 in a roundabout fashion. All right, so it's two groups measured once, the drug group and the placebo group, and then the variable is whether they develop prostate cancer or not. That's qualitative, and that means it's 11.1, .1, so we'll deal with it when we get to that section. All right, so we've reviewed how to find the difference between independent and dependent, and as well as quantitative and qualitative response variables. Now see you back here to start working on the hypothesis tab.